All right, welcome back to Let's Play Vim Tutor, and in this video we're going to continue on with Lesson 5. So let's move on down to Lesson 5. So 5.1, how to execute an external command. So if we type colon exclamation point followed by any external command, meaning anything that you would run in a terminal, you can execute that uh, in Vim. So type the familiar colon to set the cursor at the bottom of the screen. Uh, this allows you to enter in a command line. So now type the exclamation point, and then we can type in you know any other shell command that we we might uh, want to run at this point. So as an example, step three, as an example, type ls following the exclamation point and then hit enter. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll type space and then ls and then let's hit enter and see what happens. So if you can see, it's taking me out of the text editor portion of him, and now we're back into the terminal and it actually ran an ls command so if you look right above press enter or type command to continue we did an ls and you'll remember from previous videos we created the tutor file and also the file that we happen to be currently editing is this vim tutor youtube.txt so it ran an ls so if we press enter that takes us right back to the editing portion of Vim. So this is really handy if you want to run, if you're, let's say, writing, I don't know, like a Python file, and you want to just kind of run it without leaving Vim, you can just type in colon, exclamation point, and then like Python, and then the name of the file that you happen to be editing. So it's very handy for just kind of switching back and forth between something that you're running in the terminal and then something that you're writing, code that you're writing. So very handy to know that. So note, it is possible to execute any external command this way also with arguments. So again, kind of a reiteration of what we uh, were talking about there. Um, all colon commands must be finished by hitting enter. From here on, we will not always mention it. So they won't be explicit using enter, but we'll, uh, I'll, I'll make sure to explicitly mention whenever an enter is necessary, or you'll at least see it on, on my screen. Okay, that's really just kind of a, an interesting uh, aside there, so let's move on to listen 5.2. So more on writing files. So to save the changes made to the text, type colon w file name. So we saw this in the very first video of our Let's Play series where we opened up VimTutor and then we wrote the file that we are now currently editing and we did this in this way. So we typed in colon w, again the mnemonic here is w is for write, and then the name of the file. So let's step through this. Step one is type in colon exclamation point uh, ls in our, in our case to get a listing of your directory. Uh, you already know you must enter to this. Step two is choose a file name that does not yet exist such as test. Now type uh, colon w test. Okay, we'll do that colon w test where test is the name of the file that you choose. We'll just call it test just to be consistent. Uh, so if we hit enter here you'll see at the bottom it says that test new yada 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 written uh, so that that's basically saying like it's written so step four says okay let's take a look in in our file structure to see if it's actually there so this saves the whole file the vim tutor under the name test to verify this type colon slot colon exclamation point ls so colon exclamation point ls if we do that we can see now the first ls command that we ran before there's no test the next one, there's a test, a tutor, and a vim tutor, youtube.txt. So we've created it, and let's just hit enter. Uh, and actually what we can do is we can we can see what the contents of that file are. So if we say colon exclamation point cat, uh, let's say test, this will, uh, so the cat file will kind of show us some of the contents of that test file. So the test file uh, has written to it this vim tutor text file that we've been editing so let's go ahead and run that and you'll see that it's taken us back to the terminal and it's go ahead it's gone ahead and spit out the contents of the file that we wrote to in test which were the contents of the file that we've been editing this vim tutor text so we see that here in the terminal let's go back hit enter to go back to vim uh, so let's see so note if you were to exit vim and start it again with vim test the file would be an exact copy of the tutor when you saved it again this is exactly how we made a copy of the file uh, that we're editing currently. So we've sort of seen some instance of this already. Uh, so now it says, now remove the file by typing, um, in, in our case, since we're on Linux, hash uh, colon 
exclamation point remove test. So colon exclamation point that gets us into the command mode and then we know that we can remove a file by typing in rm and the name of the file is test. So that is the name of the file we want to remove. Let's go ahead and do that. It takes us back to the terminal. Uh, it's gone ahead and removed it and just to verify that let's go ahead and type colon exclamation point ls. If we do that we run the ls command we see tutor and vim tutor uh, but we don't see any tests, so we've we've successfully removed that test file from our directory. Okay, so let's continue on here with lesson 5.3. So lesson 5.3, selecting text to write. So to save part of the file, type v motion colon w file name. Okay, so what what does that mean? So step one, move the cursor to this line. So let's move it to this line here on step one. Step two is press V and move the cursor to the fifth item below. Notice that the text is highlighted. Okay, so we'll type in lowercase v, and you'll notice at the bottom left, now we have visual. So let me just press escape. That takes us back to normal mode. V takes us to visual mode. So we're in visual mode now. And so what it says is press V and move the cursor to the fifth item below. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's keep going and notice that we're uh, highlighting text here. So I'm going to keep moving down to the fifth item. So now all this stuff is highlighted. Now press the colon character. Okay. At the bottom of the screen, what we can do is uh, this this thing will appear, this sort of open parenthesis, open, uh, what do you call it, less than sign, greater than sign. Or uh, let's see, so those will appear. And then step four is type w test where test is the file that does not yet exist. Verify that you see this uh, before you press enter. Okay, so we see this. Let's go ahead and type w, and then the name of the file that we'll use will just be consistent with this example. We'll just call it test, and then we can press enter. So um, basically, what this just did is we highlighted steps one through five, and then we said write steps one through five, what we highlighted, to a file called test. That's what we just did. So step file says that Vim will write the selected lines to the file test. So we can use uh, colon exclamation point ls to see the file. So let's go ahead and do that. So indeed the test file is now there, running our ls command, and it says don't remove it, we'll use it in the next lesson. So let's actually just verify uh, that the contents of um, test just consists of steps one through five. So again, let's type in colon exclamation point cat test, which is the name of the file that we saved all that stuff to. And you can see here, we did a cat and the contents of test uh, are just the steps one through five. So we highlighted those things, we wrote them to the file, it's kind of neat. And uh, you could probably think of some instances where that would be quite useful. Uh, let's see, so pressing V, note pressing V starts a visual selection, so we saw that. You can move the cursor around to make the selection bigger or smaller, then you can use an operator to do something with the text. For instance, D deletes the text. Well, let's go ahead and just see how that works. So again, let's hit V to enter in visual mode. Let's say I want to delete items one through five. So let's go ahead and move down, pressing the J key, all the way down to the end of five there. And then if I say D, well, we see that just deleted the highlighted selection. So I'm just going to press undo or U to undo that. But that's just, um, you know, again, we have we have a, a command, which is V to enter visual mode. And we have all of these extra commands that we've learned before that kind of we can add on to that. So that's kind of very powerful. It's very um, iterative process in learning Vim. OK, so that's the end of 5.3. Let's move on to 5.4. So 5.4 is retrieving and merging files. Right, so to insert the contents of a file, type colon r file name. So step one is place the cursor just above this line. Okay, we'll do that, just above this line. Note, after executing step two, you will see text from lesson 5.3. Then move down to see this lesson again. So I, I take it what we're gonna do is we're going to probably paste in the contents of the file that we created, the test file that had items one through five, and we're probably gonna put them right there. So step two is now retrieve your test file using the command colon r test, where test is the name of the file that you use. We just use the file name test. The file you retrieve is placed below the cursor line. Okay, let's do that. So let's do colon r and then test. So if we do that, notice when I did that, that pasted in that, that red, r is kind of a mnemonic for 
read. So it read in the file name exactly where the cursor was at. So let me just undo that just so you can kind of see what happened. So I undid that by pressing U, again, colon R test. So we're gonna read in test into the location the cursor is currently at. So that's put in steps one through five that we had from our test file. Pretty neat. So let's move on down to step two. So step two, now retrieve your test file using the command colon R test, where test is the name of the file you used, yada, yada, yada. Okay, I guess we did that. So step three, to verify that a file was retrieved, cursor back and notice that there are now two copies of lesson 5.3. Okay, we kind of did that too. So note, you can also read the output of an external command. For example, R exclamation point LS reads the output of the LS command and puts it below the cursor. Okay, that's kind of cool. We can run commands just as we would in the terminal and we can put the output in the file that we're writing. So let's, let's go ahead and see an example of that. Right, so let's do colon R exclamation point ls. So if we do that, we notice that the ls command that we would have run in the terminal is displayed within the text file. So basically that content, the output of that command is now displayed in our text file. So I'm just going to undo that. But that could be useful for just running commands quickly and just seeing what the output is and displaying them directly in the terminal as opposed to switching back and forth. Lots of use cases there. So let's go back to the uh, let's go onward to the lesson five summary and wrap up from there. So item one, colon exclamation point command executes an external command. We saw that. So some useful examples, uh, ls, you know, anything that you can run in the terminal, you can run in the uh, sort of the command editor at the bottom in Vim, and that will be reflected in Vim. You can put the output inside of the editor, as we saw just a few seconds ago, uh, or you can just actually run the commands and see the outputs in the terminal itself. So item two, colon w file name, this writes the current Vim file to disk. So for instance, if you want to write the current contents of whatever you happen to be working on to disk, save the file, colon w will write, that's the mnemonic there, write the file to disk. Uh, v motion colon w file name saves the visually selected lines in file file name. So we saw that when we hit V and highlighted those first five items and we move them to uh, a file and then we can save those contents to a file uh, instead of you know the whole file. We can just save certain parts of whatever we visually select to a file that we um, happen to save in our directory. Item four colon r file name this retrieves disk file file name and puts it below the cursor position. So we saw that above uh, a few, two listens ago. And then the last one, colon R exclamation point DIR, in our case LS since we're on Linux, reads the output of the DIR or LS command and puts it in the, cur in the cursor position. So if you want to see the output of a file displayed in the file that you're editing, you can do that colon R exclamation point whatever the command is in the terminal. So that's the end of this lesson five. So thanks again for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and have a great day.